That's okay. <laughs> you know your stuff anyway. Come on, girl. Mm -hmm. All right. It is now live on Facebook. Hello, everyone in Facebook land. Um, most people join on Facebook. Some join in Zoom, but mostly on Facebook. So we'll just get that loaded up. There we are. Hello, delicious humans. <laughs> Welcome back to the Superhuman Summit. We are up to our second last speaker. Can you believe it? Second last speaker is this beautiful woman who is beside me, whichever way it is on your computer, <laughs> Michelle Crohn. G'day, Michelle. A warm welcome to you. Hi. Second last. Wow. <laughs> Bringing up the rear. You <laughs> are. We, we always <laughs> think the best one. Oh, it's last. Nice. Thank you. you. Know, that's how it rolls. Um, <laughs> so it's been a great summit so far. We've had so many themes around self-care, about alignment, about how we can all trust better and come together to change the world in which we're part of and make it better for all of us. This summit has been all about science and spirituality and the bringing and meshing of those two together. And this woman actually does that as her daily practice. So we're going to hear lots of great things. Michelle's topic is how to survive and thrive and see rainbows every day. Now, some of you know I'm a bit of a unicorn, so I love the idea of seeing rainbows every day. And Michelle's also got some science-based stuff to talk to us about, as well as energetic stuff. She's a naturopathic practitioner, has been for like 20 years. She's also a Psych K consultant and has been doing that for a few years as well. And what I love about Michelle, we had her on our first summit. She's all about that mind-body connection. And so we're going to delve into some of the greatness that is that mind-body connection and how can we all see some beautiful rainbows in the everyday world? Did I leave anything out of your intro there that you want to no, share? No, it's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> um, we may even see some unicorns if we're really lucky. <laughs> yeah, keep your eyes open, everyone. Yeah. For the unicorns. You'll have to do a unicorn summit next, I think, a superhuman unicorn summit if you love them that much. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I'll stop wearing, I'll stop wearing yeah. capes and I'll start wearing a little unicorn. Thing. Yeah, I couldn't find my cape this time. So, I ran out of time. <laughs> and I've been a bit naughty. I um, I just removed mine because I got a bit hot. So let yes. me let me re cape. Thank now, you. You wear Michelle. yours for me too. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> let's before we begin on your topic, let's just go. How did you get to be interested in? naturopathy and understanding the body and the science and energy how did you come about in your career to be studying and doing what you're doing absolutely awesome question <laughs> we've only got 45 minutes <laughs> and I do like to talk um I was I was I think I was purposely put here or found it it found me um I got to midlife well not midlife I'm midlife now I got to quarter of a century and realized that what I was doing wasn't wasn't enough and um, I got into naturopathy very last minute having been to a psychologist who was helping me work out what my path could be and because uh, I was frustrated in my previous um, thing it wasn't enough it wasn't enough I wanted to help people on a different level and so I scraped into the course I met the principal of the college and he said yep you, you're what we need sign up you start Monday and like okay um but I knew I I know I was meant to be there because two years after that I was I was um following my gut instinct um that I didn't really know I had at that age life was too busy and fun and you know all that sort of thing and I was diagnosed off my own wanting to find out more about what was going on with me with a genetic chronic health disorder and so I was really lucky to be in the field of naturopathy because it meant that I then had both sides of the knowledge of natural and western medicine wisdom and it, it was really just the start of a beautiful I think now 18 year career um, thank goodness I actually got into that because if I had gone down another model I probably wouldn't have found anything out if I hadn't had used my instinct so always 
strive to understand things if you're not feeling well or even if you are and you think yeah it's not something's not right see someone who's actually got the insight to help you in that area is my big advice there so yeah that's how I got in so 20 years later here I am and uh, in the last probably seven eight years it's developed into a very intuitive western or science-based natural genetic epigenetic um uh practitioner <laughs> you know yeah. i've developed into this whole different intuitive practitioner that i can sit in someone's space and really understand what's going on i don't know if it's medium or not i just know that i i know stuff when i'm sitting with people i just get stuff so yeah it's fun it's fun but it's also um it's also different to what is normal so i love attracting the people that resonate in the same area yeah and I know you resonated with a lot of our audience at the first summit, which is why we had to have you back. Um, and that whole idea of mind body connection and trusting the gut, you know, both what's in the microbiome of the gut, but also the intuition and the feeling that we get from the gut. So why don't we start delving into this unicorn topic, which you know, I love. So <laughs> begin where you feel we need to begin. Okay. So I suppose I'll go forward from the when I first started natural medicine and helping myself and others, you know, using nutrition and stuff like that, knowing, always knowing that the gut was the center of all disease, as, you know, Hippocrates said way back then. <laughs> um, and developed into a situation now where I was, I was, I found a process called Psyche K, which is a psycho, well, it's not even psychological, but it's a spiritual um uh, modality um that is non-denominational and it helps us to clear our minds of the stress or the perception of stress we hold which then changes our dna through the epigenetic expression of those stressors on a frequency level energetic quantum level and i i converge both of them now into not only feeding and fueling the body with nutritional medicine to help the gut microbiome because it all starts there but also helping to adapt the person to some sort of idea that they can be free in their mind and it's developed further from that where i i now coach women in in businesses that are high stress that are managing many many people um, in a in a almost a toxic environment from chemical exposure and stuff like that. I won't mention the industry. You'll probably find it if you look at my Facebook site. Um, but just just knowing that there's so many people out there that are desperate to feel more energy, and really when we look at their issues, it's 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 underlying and the and the frequency that they're sending their cells and their DNA every day has got you have got the choice to reduce and reduce and release that through psych k and through nutrition pretty so much you're, you're hitting on all of my favorite <laughs> words and lingo you know you've talked about dna you've talked about epigenetics you've talked about energy you've talked about frequency i love all of those and they may or may not be terms that people are familiar with I mean, most people have an idea of dna they have an idea of energy even if it's just the energy that's powering the lights in your home as well as, you know, we are electromagnetic energy. You know, we have electricity in our brain and magnetic energy in our hearts and together they form electromagnetic energy. But epigenetics is one that, that, that I know I love and it's, you know, kind of how we're all connected in lots of ways. It might be something others aren't as familiar with. Do you want to just mm. share a little bit about how that works? Epi epigenetics and the expression of frequency. Yeah, so um, it's very similar to, to looking looking at the stars and thinking you're not connected to those if you do if you think you're not connected to those you've got another thing coming you are we are connected and we have an interconnected uh frequency with everything that is in this universe and beyond um it's so much so that i found out of the blue today i found um a paper which i'll just quickly read it it printed up a bit weird but scientists in november 21 2020 have realized that the human brain and the universe have odd similarities in that the neurons in our brain and when they measure these neurons 
they can find that the, the structures of the perceptible universe are astonishingly comparable. I'm reading word for word. And I was, I was chuffed when I found that because it, when I look at someone's blood under a microscope and it's live and it's running around, I see the universe in there. <laughs> Call me weird, but we are, we are connected with all, all things. And so the thought process you put out and the people that you're around and the experience you have of this life that you have um, is your experience of that. And you have the capacity to change your perception of that, of that experience and change the way that your cells get information <laughs> at such a minute level. It's smaller than DNA. It's smaller than that. It's frequency. It's something that's more quantum than it is. Um, it, we can't scientifically measure it, but we can in a way. You can measure things. You can measure stress response with people with a, a simple saliva test, a cortisol test, or you can measure um, your own feeling, that gut feeling you get if you don't love something, and that really excited electric tingle I feel when I have something that's connecting with someone um, and their experience. And it's really simple when you let things go and be to actually set that experience up for yourself. It's the gut instinct, isn't so it? it really Just like you said. The whole idea of as within, so without. Um, and I think it was Charlotta, she imagines the universe as like a big glitter ball, you know, um, in a disco yep. ball. And we're all just one of the little fragments of mirrors that are all swirling around together. Yep. Yep. And I might just have one of those in my lounge room, those disco balls. <laughs> oh, yes. I love it. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it, you're right. The, the pe people, um, even trees, for example, you know, they have an energy about them. The animals that were around, um, animals are more, if, if we only knew what their subconscious minds were saying to themselves, we could, we could learn a lot more. So, you know, we, we teach animals how to do things by training them, but really they just let themselves do what they do. If they feel fear, they feel it. If they feel happiness, they I'm talking about little puppy dogs here, they wag their tail and they're all happy. And you can see the expression in their face. Mm. With us as human beings, we are, um, and Bruce Lipton and Rob Williams, the Psych K um, advocates, or Bruce Lipton's an advocate, and Rob Williams, the originator of Psych K, talk about us being um, um, a, a spiritual being in a human form. It, it, that's what we are and so when we think about it like that and we we understand that our health conditions are actually part of the manifestation of our perception of the world around us there's a lot of beautiful books I'm sure people have talked about Louise Hay one of my favorite ones um uh, Lou L, I think her name's LSE Boubaua, Boubaua French. She's got an amazing book, What Your Body is Telling You About Your Health. Mm. And so some of the chapters in those, you can go to the back of those books and you can see that, oh, wow, okay, so my, um, my reflux is about me thinking about all that stuff that I've got to do coming into my life and when I'm really stressed, it flares up. Why is that? <laughs> you know, you might have a pathogen in there as well exacerbating it but you are allowing that to to come to your system as a health complaint and that might be hard for some people to cope with they might say well I didn't do this to myself but you know what we may actually just in 10 20 years time when things are more open and people are more aware we we may actually be able to measure that metaphysical ailment mm. back down to your perceptions I love when I clear someone's mind and I love the instant I say, how did you go with that? This is with Psych K process and in surrogation with them all one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. and they just say, I feel so light. <laughs> um, I, I feel so clear. Wow, I can see things differently now. And it's like what I've, my topic is, how to thrive in these really trying times 
and see a rainbow every single day. It's possible to smell the roses every single day, even if you've got some stress or coming up or if someone's annoyed you or blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's possible Absolutely. to ride a unicorn and see a rainbow every day if you choose to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're speaking my language, girl. And I know um, this morning I actually did my video daily optimism on how some of the physical ailments and, and mental health ailments that show up are an actual response like that. And I actually checked in with my Louise Hay book because I got a blister on my foot on the weekend. Ooh. And so I looked up what was shit. And so that was really interesting for me. I was like, oh, where do I feel exposed emotionally? What do I need to do to set up some protection better? Those sorts of things. Mm. I had a friend who'd had an ankle injury and that's about the ability to receive love and fun and all of those sorts of things. So it's just really interesting to delve into that. Mm. And I think also um, what Western medicine sometimes misses, Eastern medicine and Indigenous medicine knows already in that they often intuitively can diagnose people physical, you know, skin suit that we're in. They understand that we're a spiritual being. And so... Mm. You know, in Ayurveda, they might diagnose someone um, and they know by checking their pulse that they've got um, emotional trauma that has, you know, got into their DNA. It's not necessarily Absolutely. that they've got, you know, ischemic. So much we can learn. That's right. And we do have to be a little bit careful because we, we're not allowed to, um, you know, Western philosophy doesn't like us to... Uh, say that we can spontaneously change our expression of our health because at the end of the day pathology doesn't happen overnight it happens and it creeps up it doesn't just happen overnight you've still got to feed your body this goes back to the internal um, three tiers of health that I present to people if they choose to look after themselves and make a commitment to their health they they work on their body their physicality their gut their acute stressors and then they work on their mindset and then they work on their well if we need to we actually use cofactors that help support their dna their biochemistry through cheek swabs where we can match their dna up to their um to their their need for a specific targeted personalized medicine that's the future it's the future it is here, though. <laughs> we already can do that. Um, and we can also now then, so we've got those three tiers. We've got the physical, the mindset, and the DNA if we need to actually tweak it. And there is a, another out of the blue uh, article that I found when I was doing some research for the, for the talk today that's actually written back, it was January 1993. It's called Spontaneous Remission. An associated big bibliography um, written by uh, Noetic Sciences. There's two authors there. I can put all these links in so people can have a look. But this is written back in um, uh, result like from from people who've been diagnosed with cancer or or uh, joint problems or whatever. And I just was chuffed to turn the page and look at all the chapters in this book that are connected to every single system in our body. Um, I'll just read a few because I'm going to go back and read into this. Um, remission of nervous system, um, remission of diseases of circulatory system, blood and blood forming organs, remission of endocrine hormones, nutritional and metabolic diseases and immunity disorders. Whoa, that's a big one. <laughs> our immune system listens to everything we do see, feel, touch and, uh, and think in our lives. It's waiting, it's our, it's our defence, and it is only as strong as we allow it to be nutritionally and in our mind. Um, I do a lot of programs with immune re, uh, resilience. We're only allowed to say things like that professionally. We're not allowed to say we boost your immune system because, you know, all that stuff. We won't go there right now. Um, but there's things here, uh, infection-related remission, rem remission of neoplasms of, which is cancers, of um, genitourinary system. Blah, it just goes on and on and on and on. And, you know, this may be an old old study. I'm sure that there's been some updates of this. But this is 
this has been around for a long time and, and if we can only just go back to the simple basics of helping people clear their mind, Site K facilitators around the world are beautiful and safe, effective practitioners that have a powerful, easy way to clear the mind. We do all sorts of um, balancing of subconscious and conscious mind and bring them together to a state of peace and non-attachment by simple muscle testing, by simple, uh, you know, yes, no answers of the body, that person's body based on their own belief patterns. An example of which um, I had someone the last few days who um, just I laugh because I think how funny it is that she's just walking around the the park now and showing me pictures of her daily exercise and she's exhausted because she's exercising more, you know, um, and she didn't think she, she owed it to herself. She wasn't worthy of that extra time in the day and she's a busy business operator um, dealing with 12 to 14 uh, staff members and has been uh, attacked by an ex-member of her team and blah, 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 and this woman the minute I finished, I had like 20, 30 minutes later, I had pictures of her because I hold people accountable for their action steps so that the conscious mind can activate what the subconscious mind has learned um, or cleared. And I was getting some beautiful pictures of the park. And I'm like, wow, you know, and now she's on fire. Um, and, and people in the group can't believe how quickly this has happened. It just right. sometimes takes it like that. And sometimes the balances that we do with Psyche K take a little longer, but it does take an effect. So awesome. it's pretty amazing. And it's great when you can see visible results like that and people absolutely take 100% responsibility, right, for mm, their life. Yeah. And that's what this summit, I think a lot of the themes that have come out have been around taking responsibility for your life, for um understanding and appreciating your connection with everything and yeah and honoring that in so many ways and 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 actually working on your own self-worth I am worthy of all that life and love has to offer mm -hmm. I am worthy of a deep committed passionate relationship I am worthy of the best job that I can that I love doing every day and I'll wake up to with enthusiasm. Um, these are just some of the things that I have to help people under, uh, help people write for themselves. I don't give them the words in Site K. We actually help facilitate with them. So we don't do anything for them. They do it for themselves. We just facilitate their change. And the worthiness and the self-love is, is what I say to people are, if you don't deeply and unconditionally love yourself and every single part of you, including your wobbly knees and your saggy boobs and your flabby butt, then we need to talk <laughs> because you're an amazing, beautiful, spiritual being in a human form. And, and if you're ready to clear some of that old stuff that's traumatised you, that's slowing you down, holding you back, then Site K is a beautiful, easy process to do that with. Mm. And isn't it beautiful to see a fully expressed human who's come into themselves and realise that all there is is love and that I am worthy and deserving of love. And when I do that, I can radiate it out to others and heal others just through my presence alone. Absolutely. Like, that's magical to see clients experience that. Yes. Mm. Um, on my website, you can go to the Site K section. I'm, I'm revamping a website, but um, you'll have if you have a look at Rob Williams in there, the short video, and Bruce Lipton's short video on rewiring the software in your mind, um, what you just said then is the very essence of what Site K is. Site K is here to give humanity a way to bring love back, to bring nature back and align us with nature because we're so far away from that with everything that we see and hear going on in the news that people are in a fear-based state. Yeah. And, yes, we need to be careful and, yes, we need to be, you know, looking after cross-infection and all that sort of stuff. But living in the fear of that is only serving your cells and your immune system, um, a downward spiralling energy that's not got a beautiful frequency. A frequency of love is different to a frequency of fear and hate and, you know, worry. 
Actually, based on that too, can I just quickly read something? I told you I keep talking, didn't I? No, I actually, <laughs> I printed out a few things and, and this was just one of the things from one of the studies that they've done with Site K in the papers, a research study. Worry is another component related to normal brain function. It's the brain's response to fear. It is thought of as a response of the brain to block out negative emotions that reside in the subconscious. Most people on this forum would know what subconscious mind is, the chitter chatter, the belief patterns we've had set up between naught and seven years of age. And some neuroscience have su not neuroscientists have su suggested that worry is a strategy, strategy of cognitive avoidance in which internal voices or verbalization act to suppress the threatening emotional imagery. So what you see and what you've been exposed to, worry is part of that. Um, so worry also disrupts the corpus callosum or the brain bridge. And that's, the, that's the, the barrier between the left and right hemisphere. So what we do in Psych K is we bring people back to a whole brained state, a little bit like mindful meditation, but we use, we use um, uh, goal statements which are positive and in the now so that people aren't reflecting on what they want or what they've had happen to them or what could happen they're actually staying in the now. So if they see something distressing that has triggered them to go back into that fight or flight fear-based mechanism or they don't like the environment they're living in or their relationship or their work or their children are triggering them, they can actually come back to a whole brain state and cope better and make better decisions in these areas for themselves. Um, and so I'll put, these, I'll put these links up in a little document yeah, in this. Great. Thing, you yeah. know, we'll, we'll throw those links in for people watching, whether you're on Facebook or here in Zoom to have a look at those. And I love that concept of, you know, the whole brain state. And I think, you know, in lots of the research about meditation, they might talk about mindfulness helps kind of just focus in the frontal lobe, which is great for dealing with stress and anxiety in the moment. Um, but that whole brain state that comes about through meditation, that joining of the left and right brain is something that is unique to us as humans because we can actually do that at will with yeah. and most other animals only ever get into a whole brain state when they're in the flow of say chasing prey or something like that but they can't call on it we can and that's such a gift yeah. um, for us as humans to be able to call on that and practice it and get better at doing whole brain states one of my very quick things if i'm driving and i can't um, get into the whole brain state because you really should pull over and do a psych cave thing if you need to. <laughs> you can't really drive, it's not safe. Um, is uh, snip, 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 snip that energy. I had a situation where I have had someone, um, I won't go into the details of it, but it, it triggered me because there was some innuendo that I wasn't and shouldn't have been uh, proceeding with something that had happened to my vehicle. And, uh, and I thought, well, why shouldn't I? It's, it's been damaged and I'm doing the right thing and I've got, you know, all this stuff going on around me. And then, and then that, pre, that, that situation came up again and triggered me and I had to stop, pull over and go, this isn't my energy. This is not mine. I don't own this. Snip, snip. Went into my whole brain state through Psych K and I thought, eh, it's okay. That's okay. It's all good. It's all going to be okay. The universe has got my back. I'm, you know, I'm a spiritual being in a human form. It's all good. So even Psych K facilitators get anxious and worried. And I've come from a place where I would curl up in a ball and cry and get nervous and get stomach pains and, you know, have to run to the loo and all those symptomology, well, symptom, symptomatic effects that um, I remember when I first started Psych K, I just thought, wow, this is full on this stuff, releasing this stuff. And now I can, I can see when things are going you know, a little bit pear-shaped and bring them back and look out and see the rainbows, smell the flowers, put my feet in the ground, get out in the veggie patch, do some snipping of the, <laughs> get the head snipped, <laughs> you know, go and cut a few branches off the tree that's falling down. <laughs> um, but I, I'm not like that, um, you know, and it's just really good to be able to have this. But you do need the, the physicality of the nutrition coming into your body there are some genes, I'll go into that quickly, there are some genes that actually exacerbate your ability to calm yourself down. And some people have genetic variants or mutations in those genes that allow that process to keep going. So they need that little bit extra nurturing with 
nutritional cofactors that support that. So that's why I still get into the science of this and do DNA based nutrition plus the mindset. It's all, it all, you know, it all comes into one for me. So is this how we start to experience rainbows every day? Are these some of the practices? I know you're a nature lover like me. You know, I love getting out in the land and being with trees and having my feet in the soil or the sand. And I know you do too from being Facebook buddies. I often see you out in the bush. Um, <laughs> are these some of the ways we can get into this, you know, experiencing rainbows every day? Yeah, I think um, if, you, if you're really struggling to see the beauty in nature and, and see the beauty in things around you because you've got so much going on, I'll just say energetically, so much toxic accumulation of life around you, take a step back and, and just stay open and, and be curious about what's going on around you and ask yourself, is this mine? Do I, do I deserve this? If the answer is yes, I do deserve it, we need to talk. <laughs> um, seeing a rainbow every day is about, you know, I, I'm not seeing a rainbow today because I'm in Adelaide and it's really hot and there's no rainbows around unless I get the sprinkler out later. But maybe that's the way to do it. Um, but, but part of the process is actually knowing that you are worthy of smelling the roses or seeing a rainbow by just taking that little step and say, yes, I can it is going to be a hard thing for me to do. I am brave enough to face my fears and let them go. Um, I am brave enough to look around and see something in nature. Nature aligns us with all that is. Nature is a, um, is a uh, we, 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 as I said before, we're so far away from nature generally that we don't know how to get back to what's inside us. We are nature. Just because I'm in the garden, in the bush, and you're on the beach and doing your little walks doesn't mean when, uh, if, if people aren't doing that, doesn't mean they're not in nature because nature is in them. We are aligned with nature. Part of the Psyche K process is um, when you become a facilitator or even when you're facilitating with someone is actually creating some statements that, that have been downloaded to the originator, Rob Williams, to align yourself back with nature. and. If, you, if your subconscious mind doesn't believe them or is, is, has got some perception of stress around those, it's going, yeah, whatever, I don't believe you, that little voice, um, then we clear that. We make sure we go through the process of Psyche K and we, we do balances and we do different postures with our body to bring the subconscious and the conscious mind together to a state of peace and non-attachment. Um, and, and if people are open to that, I'm happy to share a 15-minute free free thing but if I have to do more than that we we have to do more so um yeah it's just it, it is it's one step towards seeing rainbows it's taken me five well, maybe four and a half years maybe a little bit more than that four and a bit <laughs> years to get to the space where I can I can I can actually easily say I am clear I'm clear I'm clear. I just love and and the abundance that's attracting to me now that I'm part of that yes. vibration of love for myself and everything that is is so beautiful. It's the abundance is coming in all sorts of ways, that's including being on this beautiful to summit. <laughs> joyful to hear, and and also isn't it that's when you start to experience synchronicities and you think, gosh, life couldn't get any better, and the right people just show up and the opportunities start to land and we realize how much we've struggled in the past when we were below say 200 on the frequency scale yeah and things shift when we move above now mm. i know that also being a naturopath and some of your work is not just mindset but also in the gut and yes. nourishing that you know thinking about our own gut like a garden what's yeah. some of the research or science that you want to share around that around how important that is yeah. Enough being able to see rainbows. Oh, look, you could just Google gut science stuff now and just get loads and loads and loads. But the research is showing that um, we, are, we are a microbiome, not just in our gut, but in our blood. And so what passes through our gut wall into our bloodstream is totally connected. There's so many connections now, um, stress response, PTSD, um, hormones, 
thyroid conditions, all of these things are related back to the gut. There's not one person that I see in my clinic or online that I don't work in the gut area. Most people have what we call dysbiosis of the gut, which means that they have dysbiotic bacteria from antibiotics or um, infections or pathogens or genes that allow their gut to be leaky or, um, you know, and they're feeding themselves with things. They're feeding themselves with chemicals filled in their water. They're not, they're not cleaning their cells and they're not flushing toxins out daily because we live in such a toxic world. We do live in a very toxic world. If we're not generally maintaining detoxification levels daily, our gut is going to be part of the rubbish dump in our bloodstream. Um, every single chronic health disease I see needs a specific protocol to scientifically help the, um, the lymphatic wall that's in the gut, the, the immune system response. And a lot of the people who have been statistics in the latest uh, immune problems we've had have got what they call comorbidities so it's not just one thing that's that's caused their demise it's a number of things number of health disorders that have actually caused this to set them over the edge and uh, we really need to get back in touch with our gut health and our stressors around what's causing that and why we don't think we're worthy enough to eat nutritious beautiful rich healthy rainbow there you go rainbow foods rainbow <laughs> colors in your food every day I yeah. didn't get that analogy earlier but you do need to eat a rainbow of food every day and if you don't you're not getting the right nutrition in your cells absolutely and I know from my own journey having suffered adrenal fatigue and burnout at the end of corporate land um, you know relationship challenges whatever all of that had affected and I had leaky gut you know I had adrenal fatigue um, I had hy hypothyroidism, loads of things going on that were really microbiome re related. And, yeah. you know, my healing of the rest of me really didn't begin until I healed the gut first. And I see that in some of my own clients from a yoga therapy perspective. You know, they often think, how can it be as simple as just sipping and drinking some water and having better hydration and having good yeah. quality of water? You know, Absolutely. you and I um, had talked about quality of water before. And, and also starting to think about, can I be more plant powered? And I'm not saying people have to be vegetarian or anything, but to actually have a broader range of fresh fruit and veggies that aren't filled with pesticides and reducing the amount of packaged stuff that's dead food in a box. Um, and thinking about, can I eat live prana rich things because I'm yeah. the earth and let's eat from the earth. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we're all, we're all part of that cosmos going back to the opening with this. We're all part of a universe that has given us the tools in nature to keep healthy and to mm -hmm. stay, you know, on top of stuff. And we do have to, you know, revolutionize and go through different decades and you know industrial revolutions and whatever's coming next in order to survive but we also need to remember what what we are we're, we're human beings that are that are um, part of what nature has provided for us mm. and and not damaging that is another thing you know it's it's the whole it's the whole gamut of just being in alignment with nature mm. So I just want to invite anyone who's here in Zoom or on Facebook land, I'm watching all of you. If anyone has a question, a comment or anything for Michelle, this is the stage to do so because we've got about five minutes or so to go. And so I'm going to invite Michelle to share anything else that she wanted to that was of importance around, you know, thriving and seeing rainbows every day. But if anyone who's watching and viewing right now in the live, um, please feel free to put your questions and comments in now. And also, um, even if you're watching the recording later, I think it's really useful. This is a community we have and these um, presentations and these discussions are gonna remain live in the Superhuman Summit group. And so even if you're watching a replay, please pop in your questions and thoughts because we can monitor those and respond to them later as well. And it's all part of, being part of this, you know, community of humans. So where would you like to go for kind of the wrapping up or is there anything else that you really wanted to share today, Michelle? Um, I just want to give everyone the courage to really look deeply inside themselves, sit in, sit in the silence and ask themselves 
am I happy? Am I happy? Am I, am I filled with joy? Do I feel well? Can I honestly say that I have a connection with my body and, um, and, and I come from a place of love with every single interrelated relationship I have with this life? And if your answer is, hmm, let me think, or if your answer is definitely no, then please do yourself a favour and please know that you've got, you've got, even if there's an ounce of commitment that you have to put towards it to get this ball started, it's not a huge roller coaster. It just needs that little step into the fear of the unknown in order to bring yourself back to being in love with yourself unconditionally. If you don't love yourself in unconditionally, it's really, it's really important that you take back that control of you. Awesome. And that's, that's about it. A, a beautiful note to kind of end on is that whole coming back to loving and nurturing yourself. And I think Marie, who was right before you, Belinda, who was before her today, Becky was talking about Indigenous and connection with land and beautiful. understanding. Everyone today has been a theme around loving yourself, knowing yourself, being true to yourself, you know, really tuning in, tapping in, turning on, listening, which often with things like COVID, with, you know, the, the pandemic, with being isolated at home, all of those things have, you know, taken away some of that and have um, pulled us away from our centre. So it's really important to come back to that. And thank you for the reminder today and the research that you've shared and coming from that science and spirituality um, and the melding of the two. Michelle, do Beautiful. you mind sharing how people can get in touch with you or find out more about what it sure. is you do? Yep, I do programs through, um, well, not programs, I do online consultations for anyone and, and in-person consultations if they're in Adelaide. And I have a, a business called Phoenix Rising FX that is set up with two other amazing superhumans that uh, we, we work with people and give them, you know, short consultations to help understand where they can go and what they can do. We, um, I also work for myself and so the sole business owner. Um, I also work with people uh, in consultation online and they can just go to the website, Phoenix Rising FX. So it's all one F and X right next to that.com. And my own website, michellecronenaturopath.com.au or just find me on Facebook and have a chat. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty busy life. So <laughs> if I don't get back to you straight away, I will. Just, just let me know. Yeah. Sure. And so phoenixrisingfx.com or just go and look for Michelle on Facebook because I know she's yeah. quite active there and you'll get to see lots of the great things that she's doing there as well, as well as nice photos of you out in nature, which I always <laughs> enjoy living vicariously through some of your beautiful rainforests and things that you visit. <laughs> <laughs> and the veggie patch out the back, which is totally going crazy at the moment. <laughs> and the veggie patch, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom Welcome. and all your knowledge with us today. I know there'll be other opportunities to continue to connect. Um, thank you for being part of the Superhuman Summit experience. Everyone stay tuned for our final speaker of this three-day summit who is coming up next. That's Jonathan Reams. So please do join us at the top of the hour and come and hear about the science and spirit of leadership. We'll see you then. Definitely. Bye. Bye.